Welcome back. This week we are covering Alec Murdoch's audacity because you are not going to believe what he is trying to pull in court right now. The First Amendment versus the defendant's right to a fair trial because the media is still fighting in Idaho and what we learned from new motions filed in the Idaho University murders case, as well as Prince Harry going to trial in the UK and he's expected to testify in June. All of that right now. I'm legal analyst Emily D. Baker. This is The Quick Bits, where I break down just the main points of the pop culture and entertainment cases I'm currently covering on YouTube and The Emily Show podcast. Let's get into it. Alec Murdaugh is in the middle of an insurance case with insurance company Nautilus. Nautilus paid him out over $3 million for Gloria Satterfield's slip and fall at his property. In this filing where he's responding to the lawsuit because Nautilus Insurance is trying to get back that $3 million from Alec Murdoch saying that they were defrauded into paying out that claim and then Murdoch stole the money. In the latest filing, Alec Murdoch said not only did he lie about the dogs tripping Gloria Satterfield and causing her to fall backwards down the outdoor stairs, which led to her death, but he is also trying to pull in Eric Bland, his law partner, his law firm, and Gloria Satterfield's two sons into his insurance lawsuit with Nautilus, saying to Nautilus, essentially, you need to go after them too. Well, Eric Bland, his law partner and law firm, gave a press conference that I covered in my live stream on Tuesday, where they said not only did the Satterfields never recover from Nautilus Insurance, they still haven't been paid by Alec Murdoch. And if he thinks he is going to pull the Satterfield boys and the law firm into this suit, that they will automatically be suing him for not just abusive process, but going after him and his attorneys. It was very interesting to see how fiery (laughs) Eric is about the fuckery that is being pulled by Alec Murdoch but also to know that so far the $7 million plus million that have been paid to the Satterfield Sons has not come from Alec Murdoch or from Nautilus, which means pulling them into the Nautilus suit is really unlikely. But I can't believe it's even in the court filing. But really, when it comes to Alec Murdoch, are we that shocked anymore? I'm not. I also talked about Ed Sheeran's win in court. He was in a copyright lawsuit over his song, Thinking Out Loud. He had been sued by the co-songwriter's family members or surviving family members for Let's Get It On. The jury found that the melodies were not so similar that this was copyright infringement. Ed Sheeran reportedly played guitar and sang thinking out loud to the jury during trial. And the plaintiffs in that case relied heavily on mashups that Ed Sheeran had performed in concert, but it shows that just because you can mash two songs up, who doesn't love a good mashup? I know I do. Just because you can mash two songs up really well does not mean that they are actually infringing on one another. This is one of two lawsuits. The other one has not made its way to trial yet. And I wonder if the other lawsuit over the same issue will resolve just brought by different copyright interest holders we will see but for this it's a big win for ed sheeran and i think a big win for the music industry on the podcast i went through the latest motions in the university of idaho case with regard to the media wanting the non-dissemination order or the gag order removed remember the supreme court said go talk to the judge who wrote the thing so that's exactly what's happening they have said hey judge So you're infringing our constitutional rights. It'd sure be great if you don't. The judge is going to have to balance the defendant's right to a fair trial and impartial jury with the press and their First Amendment right to a free press. When you have two competing constitutional rights like this, you're really looking for the least restrictive means. And the press pointed out a lot of case law that shows that outside of a gag order, there are much less restrictive methods, whether it's redacting some documents, filing some documents under seal, which they've done a lot of, like a lot of, but there are other means short of a gag order that can work here. Now, whether the court will vacate their own gag order is yet to be seen. And 
If they don't, then this will get appealed right back up to the Idaho Supreme Court, but that could take months or years to be heard and might really be too late by the time this thing's done with trial. But there's lots coming out of these new court filings in Idaho. Well, because we don't have much else to go on because, you know, gag order. And in those additional documents on Thursday, I looked back at what is going on in the discovery part of Idaho, where the defense attorneys are asking the court to force the prosecution or compel them to turn over information they still don't have. Most of the discovery motions we've seen filed have been a very boilerplate motion with exhibits attached and the exhibit list actually ask for all the stuff they want. And those have all been under seal. So we haven't gotten a ton of information about what the defense says the prosecution hasn't turned over. Normally you can glean some information from what's being asked for. Well, that's what I covered on Thursday. We finally saw that the police did interrogate Brian Koberger and it seems that it went beyond just a I'll have a lawyer now, thanks, stop talking to me, because any interview tapes or reports still haven't been turned over. I imagine the court will compel that, but we'll see, because it's information the defense is going to want to have before this preliminary hearing next month. The defense is also asking for all of the reports with regard to the DNA, the genealogical DNA, and the rest of it. Some of those reports may be back yet, some of them may not, and I'm going to keep an eye out for the court order. Hopefully that won't be under seal and we'll actually know if the prosecution is being compelled to turn these things over. But my biggest takeaway from that again was that there is an interview of Brian Koberger somewhere and don't you want to know what it says? If this goes to trial, I guess we'll find out then. And finally, Prince Harry is in trial in the UK over hacking of phones and wiretapping of homes in this case that is expected to last over seven weeks. It's anticipated that Prince Harry will testify sometime in June with regard to these materials. And early on in the trial, we're just past opening statements now, early on in the trial, we heard that the media outlet actually issued an apology and said that Prince Harry was entitled to compensation. And while Prince William allegedly settled with this for some amount of money, and we heard that well, we saw reports of that from opening statements. We will see what happens after trial. Will Prince Harry be awarded some sum of money? Will the court find in Prince Harry's favor? Remember, that apology might not sway the judge, because there is no jury, might not sway the judge because it's regarding other incidents, not the incidents that are on trial. And those are the main stories that I covered this week. I also talked about a few other items just to keep us up to date, but this is the quick bits. So I'm trying to keep it quick. I'll see you next week. Don't forget I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays and a new long form podcast, The Emily Show, is out on Wednesday. Bye. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want more Law Nerd community, come join us at lawnerdsunite.com.